Hello, it's Sarah. And I'm, I'm feeling inspired. i got to turn the camera on. I'm going to cover a paper mache box with some clay, polymer clay. And I've been playing with this idea for a couple days. I'm going to do it in a steampunk style. So I've realized that I hadn't really done like an Altoid tin or a box covered with a steampunk polymer clay theme. Like I have this for inspiration right here. This is like um, assemblage, right? This is a, I actually have that out here. Um, a cogs and wheels. I just um, embossed some tape. Ooh. And then you just stack a bunch of all types of steampunky stuff in there, right? So I have Steampunkery. This is a polymer clay projects guy by Christy Friesen. I've made a few of those. Here, um, anywho, this is going to be kind of along those lines, but um, let me just start. And to cover this box, I'm going to use black. And I'm just going to do the lid first. Um, because you don't really need to worry about the bottom right now. I want to, the, the lid is the focal point. So I think I'm going to need a little bit more clay. And I believe this is Primo. I'm not positive. I have a little more here. And I use scraps. I, I am kind of going through this use what you have thing. So um, I just went through my stash. For the past couple days, I've been playing with this idea. I'm going to go down. Now, I have a um, pasta machine, right? It's not really for pasta, but they sell it in the clay aisle. And let's see. This is a number. This is kind of the thinnest, which I think is going to be too thin. Because I'm going to stack other pieces on top. I think I'm going to go up a little bit more. I mean, like thicker. I'm going to go a little thicker. All I don't think all pasta machines are the same when it comes to um, what number you set it on. So this is kind of like I would say the second. Looks like it's number seven, and it goes up to nine. So, I don't know if that helps you out. And then, I'm going to put a little glue. Actually, should I texture it first? I want to add a little texture. And I was thinking stars. I kind of still am. Because what I'm thinking is I'm going to do something like this. And these are just my samples. But a moon and a sun. I, I might butt that right up against the side. I'm not sure. Um, so I think I do want to texture. I, I know I have a texture like plate for stars. Now, what I'll say about this is steampunk is industrial chic, kind of, it's a made up thing, kind of like, um, here, I knew I had a stars one. I'm going to poke them in though. I think I want to poke them in because I could poke them out, but I'm going to poke them in. Um, it's kind of based on, let's see, I have a magazine. This is like a coloring book. So it's, it's Victorian meets Industrial Revolution type thing. And people go to like um, cosplay fairs. It's top hats. It's anything like cogs and wheels and... Um, buckles and leather and corsets, things like that, goggles. So you can really put your own spin on it. This is going to be cosmic steampunk. <laughs> I just named it. Because I'm going to make it kind of um, the moon and the sun and the stars. And I think I'm going to put it on here first, and then I'll cut it around. And I'm just going to use regular uh, white glue 
because I don't have, I might, I don't think I have any um, liquid Sculpey at the moment. And I'm not that familiar with liquid Sculpey and how it works. Uh oh. Looks like there's some blue in there, which that won't matter. I don't know if it's clay. I mean, I would imagine it is clay. Um, but I know that uh, white glue works. Haven't used it in a while, guys, as you know. Well, some of you know. I've been a little bit missing in action, MIA, right? As far as crafting goes. But my house is cleaner than ever. <laughs> um, and I'm supposed to be exercising right now. So this is an exercise day. And I just brought my coffee in here and I was like, hmm. And all of a sudden, it just came to me. And I thought, well, I can go tonight or I can go, you know. I'll get it in. And even if I don't, it'll be worth it because this is exciting. All right, so a little bit of white glue, and then I'm just going to center my stars. Now, polymer clay needs to be baked in the oven, for those of you who don't know. And I should have kind of made sure there's no bubbles underneath before I place it down. Um, I really haven't struggled with bubbles when I've baked. It's been okay. I mean, like, it hasn't caused, I burnt clay before. But bubbles haven't been my issue. So I am giving it some pressure. I don't want to press out the um, stars. And I'm going to cut around this with an X-Acto bleed. And then I'll put the edges, the sides on with, with a different piece of clay. I think it'll just be neater. That being said, you never know. Live. YouTube. Let's see if I can pick this up. This is probably not a good idea. Um, there we go. Um, because this is just my background and then I'm going to kind of try and push some bubbles out. This is just the background because what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some silver clay and some gold clay or bronze or Maybe even yellow, but these were just my um, kind of prototypes. I was thinking about it. So I'm going to press around the edge and just get it to... I'm not a professional, but I have, have I've had some experience with this. I have covered um, paper mache before. So like I said, you're going to bake it. Um, it's only a 200 and I think 75 degrees oven, so it's not like it's going to burn, but you shouldn't put anything in there like that's going to just melt super easy. Some plastics are okay in there, but not all, so it is a little um, risky. So if you want to put plastic in there, like see here's a mirror. This is a little mirror. That'll be fine. Glass, beads, wire. See I'm thinking about putting some wire. I might put beads on there, but they have to be glass. So this is going to take some time. So for today, if you want to play along, go through your stash. And I had some other ideas because see, I, I just saw this alterations die in my stash. This is by Tim Holtz, and he does a lot of industrial chic. I don't know if you call it that, but grunge, right? And so all of those things are fine for this type of project that I'm doing. This heart just inspired me. I thought, okay, I could just do a heart with wings and, you know, really just steampunk it up. And by steampunk, I mean like I have all this stuff. I went through my stash and grabbed lots of metal, gears and cogs and wings and keys and clocks, anything industrial. But, it, you know, then again, put your own spin on it. You can make it as glamorous as you want to. I'm excited to use some of this stuff because I've had it in my stash forever. These are little um, eyelets. I cannot wait to just embed these in the clay. So I have some mark making tools as well. You saw I use the stars, but I have these clocks. Um, I have other gear. 
oh this is like a I don't know I maybe this is a Tim Holtz stamp no it's ink it ink a do so I'm not sure how much of that I'll do now that I've kind of come to a design idea I think I'm just gonna go with this I'm gonna go with this what did I call it cosmic steampunk or something um, I'm going to cut my own uh, shapes because I like my little um, my little um, s s hor oh god I can't talk my moon and my sun now the only thing I have to decide is if I want to go to the edge or keep it in I think to the edge but maybe not him maybe he'll be kind of off to this I could also put a star like a big star but they're all gonna get steampunked and they're all gonna be I think I'm gonna use like I have other colors of clay I have this is gold I'm pretty sure so I think I'll use this for this the um, sun and then I want to find some silver see I have scraps I have tons of clay so this is gold <coughs> <clears throat> I'm definitely going to find some silver. I think my moon should be... Oh, look, I do. I have Sculpey Translucent Liquid Sculpey. So I'll, I could put that underneath when I'm um, overlaying things. But I want to find some silver clay. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to get organized. If you don't have a paper mache box, let me just say real quick, just make an art tile. So you could just cut out a piece and then you can play around. And then if you have a little easel, I literally pulled my room apart yesterday looking for everything and getting ideas and inspiration. You can just put it on a little easel like that and have it and display your artwork like that. Um, so yeah, so go on and look for anything if you want to play along or you know do it tomorrow after you watch the video but I'm looking for my silver oh I have a little see also I tend to always want to add color so there's a good chance that I'll add maybe some of this teal which is gorgeous this is called peacock pearl actually and some purple See, this is gray, but I want silver. Let me see if this is silver or gray. Elephant gray. I'll find it. I'm sure I have it. And you can also grab mica powders. Mica powders are perfect pearls, pearl X powders, and they just have such high polish shimmer and shine. I'm not going to put that on until I've got everything placed because it has a slickness to it that I don't want to, I want the clay to stick together first while I'm um, layering things. What else? I mean, you're going to need a few tools and stuff like that. You guys know. I was also thinking of doing a bug one. So I was going to steampunk a butterfly and then I have charms of like, I was going to make a ladybug and then you could make see I my brain now it's just like clicking but you could make like um, leaves and vines and stuff it would be really cool oh now I'm tempted to do that maybe I'll work on two <laughs> at a time because I have two lids and then this background I think I would do well I'd have to do it like either I think black I always go to black because the mica powders just pop on black so well. So if I maybe if I did the background black, I could put like a blue mica powder over it to represent sky. Um, I'll probably do that on this one as well. Maybe this one will be more like a sky blue and this will be a night sky color. Um, but I think I'm going to do it. Um, I have a lot of these texture things that have like, let's say if I have one that's more like viney. I have wood grain, snowflakes, stripes, let's see, waves, this is kind of cool, hmm, I don't have one that's like viney, but I bet you I have a, um, 
stamp that's very more like um, this is called tooled leather and it's gorge but it's not steampunky let's see it doesn't have to be steampunky that's a thing because I'll add metal I definitely have like a big um, stamp that's uh, like a, a background stamp that's kind of like all like this would be cool all right, so I am going to figure out just words would be cool. I could just put a bunch of different stuff. That might be an idea. And I'm going to go away and figure out what I'm doing. Gather up, get ready to go, and then I'm going to play with clay. So I will be back. All right, I just covered this lid. I'm going to use this Tim Holtz. I don't know what it's called, but it's something that I've had in my stash. And I just think it has kind of a, a garden theme. And here's the thing. I may end up covering all this, so don't worry about it. It's just background texture, but I'm giving some pressure. There'll be, I like it because it has these like kind of whole looking things and vines. So that's it. Um, and I'll probably end up putting other texture on there as well. So those are my two backgrounds. This one's going to be for a butterfly. And I'm going to put that aside. I had this one too that I like that has kind of like hearts and swirls. Let me see what this looks like. I think it's enough, but yeah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm a... Uh, more is more, girl. All right, so this is my stars one. So I want to create... Oh, damn it. I'm so excited to get started. I keep turning the camera on. I thought I was going to do my moon with silver, but then I found some white pearl, and I think I'm going to use the white pearl because I can put silver mica powder on the white pearl. So you need to condition the clay. This hasn't been used in a long time. Well couple months. So first I just get it moving into a shape that I can fit in my pasta machine. I have black on my hand so this is glue. I have glue. I think glue squished out when I um, put the other top on and now it's stuck to my hands and my baby wipes are not wet. They're up. It's the bottom of the barrel here. Yeah, they're pretty dry. <clears throat> so I should go wash my hands. Anyway, so I'm going to put this in the pasta machine a few times. Like, just keep folding it, run it through. And this conditions the clay. It just moves the polymers around inside the clay. And so it, it becomes pliable or malleable, whatever you want to say. And I just needed enough to make a little moon. I want to keep it on the thin side because like I said, this is the same width that I used for the um, top of the box because I'm going to be layering. I don't want to have to bake it for too long. Let's see. I'm going to just use this as my guide. I need a little, I think I need a little more clay. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to condition all my clay and then I'll be back. All right. I got stuff ready to go. Um, put these aside for a sec because I thought if I put my sun and my moon on without having put the edge, it won't be right up against the edge. So I'm going to cut this in. Let's see. I got to make it straight try to make it as straight. Let's see, I'll use a ruler. So James is in Japan. My youngest son. He left 24 hours ago. He finally, He's just getting there. <laughs> anyway, um, so I have his doggy with me, Jenny. She's a good girl. Alright, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a little bit of this white glue 
I really, I think it adheres pretty good. I've never had an issue once it's baked um, when I've done this, but I'm just doing it because I don't know. And we'll hope for the best. That's all. Put it on here. Can you see what I'm doing? It's black, so it's not really showing up, I'm sure. And I'm going to pinch out that edge. I don't think I'm going to make it all the way around, but that's okay. And I'll texturize it after, too, because I just, that was a, just thought of that. Alright, once that's on there, you just take your blade. We'll try and just kind of run the blade along. It is paper, it's paper mache, so be careful if you get a little under your blade. You can kind of rip it off too. I'm just going to pinch the top. So this isn't going to be very professional looking, I don't think. But once I've added all of my cool steampunky stuff, who knows? I mean, my work tends to be pretty neat looking, so I'm not too worried about it. But if you are, you know, if you're a sloppier worker, maybe just watch it. I don't know. <laughs> to try to prevent clean up at the end um, and I didn't actually pinch but I think it's it's for me as far as I know I don't know what will become of this box and in that case I don't worry about it I'm doing it for the enjoyment of the process so don't forget about that don't be a perfectionist because you know what? Art isn't about perfection. It's about being in the moment and enjoying the process. So let's see, I need a little more glue probably. And Probably would have been smart to texturize it, like put the stars on at the end. And um, then you won't have to worry about, like, I'll use my X-Acto blade. Um, pressing the, uh, so I go over the other side a little bit, and that way... It's like a perfect match. Except it's glued down. And didn't I just say, don't be perfect? I just try to do the best I can. Just do the best you can. And don't sweat the small stuff, right? That, there's a reason these are sayings. <laughs> There really is. Those sayings, they are there for a reason. All right. I just figured I might as well get that done, and then we can get to the fun part. So that's all I'm going to do. And just before I bake it, too, just make sure everything is just how you want it, because once you bake it, you can't fix it. But before you bake it, you can. You can, you can rub. Like, there are tools, like if I, maybe if I took my and just roll it over the edge a little it'll kind of calm that joint down a little or blend it in and if I play if I did clay more I would work through all these little kinks and have more direct answers and reasons for you guys but I'm just an amateur I like to play and I like to create most of all so I don't get 
too I don't continue too much with one thing because once I've done it for a while I kind of get bored and I need to move on to something new so that's what you get with me you're gonna get a lot of different jack of all trades master of none that's me all right that is done not in love with some of these lines but like I said I'm gonna put my moon down and my son and then we'll see what needs to be done where is that um, texture sheet with the stars on it because I feel like I want to do that too before um, here it is before I uh, so I'm just going to try this um, I think I could probably just press on the inside of it yep and just roll it along got it now I want to take I'm gonna do my son first and I used this is like my biggest I have baby wipes I went and found some this is my biggest circle um, cookie cutter and it worked really well so what I want to do is take this and just make sure I'm making sure I have enough clay I'm gonna use maybe if I press yay so I'm gonna use this as my guide for the outside edge I already think I messed that up though and I'm gonna go I want to go kind of overboard a little and I don't want to cut it yet so I'm not this is the cutter side so I just wanted to make an indent mark and then I'm gonna make um, little sun rays just with my exacto blade and I'm, I'm not really worried if they're perfect size or straight or wonky just something uh, sun sunshiny sorry I can't talk and create evidently I'm having a hard time putting my words together um, I'm not thrilled with that last one but we'll put something over there all right this is a little thick I wonder if I want to go down a size. And I'm not crazy about this little part, but then for my moon. So I think I'll do it off camera where I can really focus and I'll show you what. Um, okay, so then for the, and I'll come back at the end, but that's basically what you want to do. And then for the um, moon, I'm going to use this as my, where'd it go? This is just my shape, my size. I like the size of this, but I'm going to change the face a little bit. So I'm going to cut the face myself. Um, so I just want the back for the size. And then I'm going to come in and do my own. I don't like that already it's too high and then he gets a mouth I want his mouth to be a little bigger and then he comes down like that I made him wonky So let's see.
And the other thing is I should have texturized the clay first. This is my first go round. I just want to see if it's going to look right. I like it. All right, so that's what it's going to kind of look like, but I'm going to go down. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to go down a size with the clay, and I'm going to texturize it first, meaning I think I might do clocks and... Um, I have these, like, little gear, these things... Where are they? I have gears. These gears. Let's see what it looks like. If I just kind of go. It's not even like really showing up. I have these gears. That's not showing up either. Now, these are... Um, stamps obviously that you would use for ink so it depends and I feel like this is Sculpey 3 oh, no 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 I feel like it's Primo and so I think I might use look at the clocks that looks cool I think I might use the clocks anywho I will come back and show you what I did so you can manage this without me doing it with you I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did only I'm going to try to make this look nicer on the edge and I'm gonna um, do some texture before I put it on actually here let me just do it with you because you want to texturize it too before you even cut it because if you cut it and then you texturize it you're gonna um, alter you're gonna distort the shape so I didn't go down in size. Maybe I shouldn't. This is kind of thin already. So now I'm on an eight. So it's not the thinnest, but it's pretty thin. Um, I'm going to try it, and I'm just going to do clocks. Let me roll this on. And I'm going to do, I have to take it off here first, too because if you don't it also will distort so this is going to be really thin but that's okay all right so I'm going to do my Sun first I have to get and it's kind of thicker over here I'm sorry I'm not like a professional and I'm going back up in size I don't like that thinness I feel like it could rip so it's still thin though all right let's do this a little more even. I'm just going to use my hands. All right, at least it's even. Get it off there because it'll be harder to remove it. All right, then we're going to get the size just by pressing here. All right, I can see, and then this, I like it kind of big, so I'm putting an indention, a little too much. Then I'm going to cut like I did before. First, I'm going to go around the outside so that I can see it better and maybe you guys can too and then I'm gonna start and I'm gonna really make this kind of nice so that you know it's not as easy as I say it is but I only have one cup of coffee. Well, I had two cups of coffee, but I love coffee. Do you guys love coffee? I was always a tea drinker, and now I am so into coffee. See, I don't love that either. 
anywho, um, I've, I wanted to do decaf because I've been having heart palpitations. I think they're like, they're not dangerous. Like I Googled it. It might be from menopause. Like I really think I'm menopause, like perimenopause right now. Um, anyway, I just wanted to like lighten up on the caffeine a little bit because, uh, I don't like them. They don't feel good when you have heart palpitations. I don't know if you've ever had them, but like it just feels uncomfortable really. All right, I want to cover up that little blue star. Kind of cut off. Some of these are like almost cut off, so I need to be careful, see? Oh, dang it. But I'll press them in. I'll press them down. And generally, they don't go anywhere. Once you've put it on clay like I don't really need to use the um, liquid polymer clay this will stick to itself just fine I like that I like it I'm excited I feel like I, I, I'm on to something and that's what has become important to me as well is I do um, other people's work a lot like I was um, when I first started YouTube I was a decorative painter and um, you that's what you do you paint other people's designs and I love that and the reason I loved it too is because you don't have to think you don't have to design anything and you don't have to pick colors I, can, I have a hard time making decisions so it's a perfect um, way to create without worrying about all that stuff um, but what I've tried to do lately is to come up with my own designs and I really feel an extra, like you get proud of yourself. Let me see this. I might be able to fit a star up there. Do I have like a tiny star? Let me see. Um, what color should the star be? The star could be silver and shiny see because like the silver it has these speckles in it we'll see I think and then I have to steampunk everything so I don't want to get too crowded or I don't know why not <laughs> I guess that's just how I roll where'd that little mirror go here I think I'm gonna put a mirror on there all right so I'm gonna go away and do my moon and a star I don't want to take up too much time and I'll be right back should I do a star? I think I'm not going to do a star. Where's, I don't even know where my, I have these tiny little, um, and I could cut my own star, but I'm sure doesn't really need it. I think if I were going to do it, I should put a couple. Usually the moon has a little star like right there, but that looks off. I don't think I'm going to do a star. I'm going to like center them or, you know, put him just opposite. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. <laughs> 